Anderson High was the only black high school in the city of Austin. It was a community school. Uh, everybody basically knew everybody. The teachers was within the community and uh, went to the same churches and Bible, Bible shop, beauty shop. It was just one big community. So you felt comfortable, you felt at home. You wasn't a stranger. Uh, you knew that the teachers was educators, that they had uh, an investment in all of the students and, uh, and, the, and they care. Yeah. And that's what, it, yeah, that's what Allison meant to me. You knew the teachers, and if you didn't know the teachers, the teachers knew your parents. They knew who you were, they knew where you come from, they knew your history. And they uh, <clears throat> knew, uh, understood how to approach you, how to teach you what you need, how much push you need, and, 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 and everything. They was a guide, they, they were strict, they were disciplinary. It was, it was just like being at home or going to church. My freshman year, we had some white teachers. So I got a first-hand look, the difference between the black teachers at Anderson and what few white teachers we had at Anderson. Uh, you could not get over on the black teachers at Anderson. Uh, the black teacher, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't play the games. They told you uh, you were there for one thing, to get an education. You wasn't there to come and play games. You were there to learn. They stress to you why you was there at the school, why you needed the education, what price had been paid for us to be there. But as uh, and like I said, they were dis disciplinary, and and the uh, white teacher, it was a new experience for them. They didn't know what direction to go until the middle of the year and they started getting an understanding about the students that they was teaching. And they seen that it was a different concept than what they was used to. And it was basically the same thing after I uh, uh, with McCallum, you know. Uh, you didn't have that push like you did at, at uh, Anderson. Uh, it was more relaxed. It was basic. You get it or you don't get it. At uh, McCallum, they didn't. They didn't push you the way that the black teachers push you at uh, at Anderson. The way we treated the white student that was bust into Old Anderson. We had a welcome committee. We posted sign, welcome to Anderson. We greeted them. We, treat, we treated them no different than anyone else. They was an individual, they was a sister, they was a brother. You know, it, it, it wasn't about being white or being black. It was about being students at Anderson. We wanted them to be happy, to learn about us, to know what we are truly like and not what they heard about us. That we was no different, if not better, than what they have uh, dealt with in the past. And we just try to be fair. Uh, the treatment we received when we went to McCallum. They had to cover over the front sidewalk because they didn't straight for go home, nigga. We were, you know, <laughs> we were sent into a bad situation. And uh, it was, you know, it was, you know, we couldn't understand why. This is the way we treated the white student who came to Old Allison. And yet and still, they closed our school, our only school, our only black high school, and buses all across the city. 
And what do we run into? Hate, prejudice. We've seen it. Now, some of the white students that went to Old Anderson, came to Old Anderson, some of them went to McCallum. They didn't have a problem with us. To, to them, it was just another school year at a different school. I went to school with, the, with these brothers and sisters at Old Allison. They greeted us. They hung out with us. But a lot of them hung out with us more than they did with the other white students. Because they wasn't the richest kids in the school. Their parents couldn't afford to send them to private school. So they came to Old Allison and they came and they learned about our culture. About how we act, how we react, and that we were the loving people. And it just carried on. I seen them uh, uh, widen 12th Street and paid it. I remember during the summer walking to uh, Rosewood Park if I didn't have money to go to Giving Park. I walked to Giving Park, walked to both parks. I remember the Harlem Theater, going to the movies on the weekend, and uh, having a good time. And I remember movies usually didn't let out till 11 o'clock, walking through East End, nobody bothering you, and walking home. My father, Bob Shaw, was up, there, up on 12th Street. I did a barbershop on East End. So everybody knew who I was and who my father was. And, and uh, so, you know, my aunt was down the street on 12th Street from the barbershop. So on the way walking home, I would stop by her house, visit with them, then continue on home. And I remember the majority of uh, of his sisters living here in Austin, not too far from each other. And Austin, you know, East Austin was home. East Austin was a city for blacks in Austin. You, uh, live and breathe East Austin. Some way, somehow, everybody knew each other. You have, you had lots of family in Austin, in, the, in East Austin that you could share with, that you could visit. Uh, in the neighborhood, <clears throat> everybody knew everybody. And every parent gave the other parent permission to get hold of you if you got got out of line. And if you got out of line, nine times uh, out of 10, they would spank you. Then they call your parents and let them know that they spank you. So when you got home, you got another spanking. So you know, go back to the old saying, take a village to raise a child. And that's what East Austin was, a big village raising a multitude of children. And that's what you don't see today, is that, uh, that connection with different families. Playing football. We was one game short of being city champion. One game. And uh, we was looking forward to the next year to see, to show the city what we could do, that we could win the city championship, but we didn't get that opportunity. And it always weighed on us, what could we have done if we had one more year? One more year. It's, you never know, you never know.